What is up you guys, this is JP coming at you with another video. Today's video is going to be about applying techniques. Now, browsing through Instagram, going on YouTube, maybe someone online that you're following talked about applying a specific technique or workout intensifier to your program or to a specific exercise you're doing. Whether that's to recruit more muscle, make it harder on you in some way doing that specific exercise. Now, there is no shortage of personal trainers online on Instagram or on YouTube. I mean, you could go anywhere on social media and find uh, fitness tips or ways to amplify your exercise to make it harder or more difficult. If you took every single one of the things that you've seen online and tried to apply it all at once, obviously it would be way too much. It, it would just be, the exercise would lose its simplicity, okay? Um, there, obviously there is a such thing as overcomplicating an exercise and defeating the point of the original uh, reason why you selected that exercise to begin with. So one thing I want to talk about before we get onto isometrics, which is the main point of this video, is that whenever you have a technique or workout intensifier like isometrics, um, you always want to have a specific intent for why you're applying that to your program. Not just a very vague reason as in, uh, okay, it's going to make the exercise harder. How does it make the exercise harder? Why does it make the exercise harder? making it harder, does that actually lead to more gains in muscle mass or strength? And then on top of that, is that the best way to make it harder? Is that, is taking the route of applying a specific workout intensifier going to short you in gains in the long run because you could have done a different, you could have took a different route and got even better gains than that. So the main purpose of this video, and I'm gonna give you a specific example with isometrics is, Whenever you have a workout intensifier, just make sure you're applying them for a specific reason and you dig a little deeper. Don't just take something someone says and apply it. I mean, hopefully they're telling you the mechanisms behind it, but try to, for your own self, try to look at the research and dig a little deeper and find out why you're applying that workout intensifier. Now, onto the main example is isometrics. Uh, for those of you who don't know, an isometric contraction is just, or an isometric muscle action is just an action of a muscle trying to exert force, but there is no change in length of that muscle. So it's not uh, concentrically contracting or it's not an eccentric muscle action. So it's not lengthening, it's not shortening. Uh, another easy way to spot an isometric uh, contraction is when there's no change of angle at the joint. But essentially, the joint that's working is not moving and the muscle that's working is not moving. Now, a lot of the times you'll see people implement isometrics in certain things like a goblet squat or some squat variation. They'll take pauses going down the squat uh, to make the exercise harder, okay? Um, and again, what the rationale is that they're uh, applying isometrics, I, I don't know. But a lot of the times it's not for other reasons like rehab and better reasons. And again, I don't know the reasons, but a lot of, you can just tell and I've talked to people, a lot of people will apply isometrics, I've been told, uh, to make that specific exercise harder. Now, you have to understand what you're doing when you're adding an isometric, okay? All you're doing is you're stopping that uh, eccentric or concentric contraction throughout the range of motion, you're stopping it and you're pausing with whatever load you're using. Now, I've talked about this numerous times in my videos and I'm not gonna go too much down this tangent, but we know that there has to be a specific amount of intensity or mechanical tension applied to the muscle for your muscle to break down and for it to have, an, have a reason to grow. So when I see excessive usage or pretty much almost any usage of isometrics pausing throughout you know, the, the repetitions that you're doing as an intensifier, you need to think that, okay, you're just elongating, you're elongating the duration that you're putting that muscle under tension. Now, if we were to take this to an extreme and we were to, let's just say you take a, a set that lasted 20 seconds or 30 seconds and you had no isometrics in it. And let's just say you read somewhere online the isometrics are gonna make the, the exercise harder. So you add in a bunch of isometrics and the set ends up being, let's just say ends up being a minute and 10 seconds. Now, there's a certain, level of intensity that you have to give up by elongating the set that long. Think about it, the duration of the set is inversely related to the amount of load that you're using. Whereas instead of using isometrics to sit there and elongate the set to make it harder, 
you could have just not used the isometrics and then you could have just increased the amount of load you were using, which in turn is going to increase the volume. Let me give you an example. If you had a bench press and you were doing 10 reps on bench press for 100 pounds, 10 times 100 is 1,000 pounds of uh, workout volume or tonnage. So if you had 1,000 pounds of tonnage over that course of uh, 10 reps for at 100 pounds for that one set. Now let's just say you were to incorporate a lot of isometrics. You just did a bunch of pauses throughout the repetition and it increased the, let's just say it increased the duration of the set to double, but you had to drop the weight all the way down to 60 pounds. Now, even though you might have more, how do you say it, more time under tension, you have to understand that is that threshold of intensity that you're dropping is not worth it for the amount, is not worth it even for the amount of time that you have time under tension. So even though time under tension goes up, the amount of tensity drops so much that it's going to have a negative effect on hypertrophy. So overall, I think that you have to understand is why you're using isometrics, uh, what's your purpose? Let me give you an example. If you're using isometrics for mind to muscle connection, let's just say you're not feeling the muscle as in uh, for the upper back. A lot of the times as a coach, I'll see, hear people say, or people that I'm working with say, they can't feel their upper back or their rear delts. If you were to add an isometric at the end range of motion for a face pull, for example, and you were using isometrics specifically for this reason, because you wanted to feel the rear, rear delts working, you wanted to feel the upper back musculature working, that would be a good way to implement isometrics. A couple other good ways to implement isometrics are for rehabilitation. I see that all the time in rehabilitation. I had to re rehabilitate my knee when I tore my ACL meniscus. Um, another good uh, example of an isometric being applied is specificity. So if you're, let's just say you're doing some, some form of sport where isometrics are heavily involved, let's just say with MMA, a lot of the times you might end up in, in a collar tie up with somebody um, and you're in a static hold where your muscle might not be changing uh, length and you might not be changing angle of the joint that's working because they're trying to fight back with you. Um, that would be a good time in the gym or whatever, working with your coach to implement isometrics because that's something that's going to actually happen in the event, fight or whatever it is you're gonna be doing. This can be applied to many sports. So as you can see, there are times where you can implement isometrics, but I think that as an intensifier, as an intensifier, I personally don't believe the isometrics are beneficial because all it is is dragging out the duration of the set and pausing with that same amount of load. When in turn, you could have just not paused throughout the repetition, not done these pauses, um, and then you could have just upped the load, had greater intensity, and I think that's going to benefit you more in the long run, and a lot of data uh, shows this. You know, when you go too low of a threshold of intensity, even if a lot of other variables are up, there was a study that showed that one, gr uh, one group had lower intensity, they weren't working with as heavy as loads, I think it was 30% 1RM, they had greater power output, they had more time under tension. Um, the other group had higher intensity but less power output, less time under tension, and I think the group that actually had 30% uh, 1RM actually had more volume as well. Uh, but they ended up making less gains. So that just shows that there's a certain threshold for intensity where you're going too low. So again, things like working on technique, uh, mind and muscle connection development, for rehab, for specificity, those things are good reasons to uh, incorporate isometrics, but as a pure workout intensifier, just to make the workout harder and to uh, maybe get more gains in uh, strength or gains in high, uh, muscle mass, I personally don't believe they're good, and again, the research shows it. So, just be wary of when you apply isometrics and be wary of when you apply any workout intensifier because again, it could be hurting you more in the long run. If you guys have any questions, comments, leave them down below. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.